Hello, it's Bruce Williams again, and today I want to present the first in a series of lectures on the selected gross pathology of non-human primates. As I do at the beginning of my lecture, I want to thank and recognize a number of individuals who have provided images to me either directly or through providing them to large collections from which I have drawn them. Uh, I'll start with Ann Lewis who runs the Primate Pathology Image Database out of Oregon Primate Research Center. Also would like to recognize Ed Dick and Gene Hubbard who have contributed over 1,500 baboon images and images of other non-human primates which currently reside in the NOAA's archive database. And then finally many of the older images have been provided by Dr. Barry, Gary Baskin, an ex-AFIP alum who worked for many years at the Tulane Research Primate Center. I'm going to divide these lectures up into the systemic diseases which we will start with, diseases which affect the entire animal, such as the herpes viral diseases, the immunosuppressive diseases, and a few other conditions like amyloidosis, which affect many organs within each animal. And then as I have done in previous lecture series, we will go system by system to cover the remainder of the diseases. With that, let's start with the herpes viral diseases. It would take a number of lectures to cover every single herpes virus that affects the non-human primates, including man. There are quite a number of herpes viruses. They're often species specific and we're going to review some of the more important and more characteristic ones that all veterinary pathologists, even if they don't work routinely with non-human primates, should be familiar with. We're going to start with a very dangerous herpes virus. It's a member of the alpha herpes viruses. And its current name is Maccasine herpes virus type 1. It's been known by many names, and many people will know it as B virus. This is a virus which is seen in macaques. And alpha herpes viruses can be very, very damaging if they jump from species to species. In the normal host, they don't cause much of a problem. They will cause necrotizing lesions primarily in the orogenital regions. Humans have one. Herpes simplex virus affects, type one affects the mouth, type two affects the genitals and many of these viruses in primates act in a similar fashion. They tend to cause minor infections during times of stress and then they go back into the nerves of the face and the ganglion of the face without causing systemic problems. In severe cases in which animals are very young or immunosuppressed they may go systemic but that is unusual. The herpes B virus um, was named after Dr. Brebner, the first person who died from this virus. Alpha herpes viruses, when they jump from species to species, when the B virus goes from uh, macaque to human, uh, will cause a severe necrotizing encephalitis. And in this particular case, although there has not been a documented infection since the 1990s, about 70% of people who have been infected by this virus have died of encephalitis. We must consider that all macaques are infected even if not, they're not showing clinical signs and because it hides in the ganglia and the nerve fibers of the face and the groin it's not something that you can pick up on a blood test. In most cases animals that are positive for this are culled due to the potential risk for transmission to people. Zoonatic transmission can be uh, or can occur as a result not only of bites or scratches but also the splashing of saliva into the mucous membrane. So it poses a significant risk and should never be underestimated. In the host as we see here there is a circumscribed ulcer on the lips and this may be the only sign that you see intermittently that an animal is infected with Maccasine herpes virus 
type 1. Other animals may show more severe lesions, as we see here with ulcers on the lips, the nasal platum, and a large ulcer on the tongue. The characteristic uh, histologic lesion of herpes viruses is necrosis and, if it involves a mucous membrane, ulceration. You will see large areas of tissue loss with infiltration by neutrophils, and then you will see at the edges of these ulcers multinucleate viral syncytia or uninucleate cells with these large glassy herpes viral inclusions. Herpes B has been identified in a wide range of old world macaques, including rhesus, cinnamalgus macaques, stumptails, Japanese macaques, pigtails, bonnets, and Taiwan macaques. And although very uncommon, transmission to New World monkeys has also been seen. Transmission is horizontal between macaques, with most animals acquiring the infections by two to four years of age. While carriers of the virus generally have a low rate of shedding, it will pop up from time to time with stress factors associating with transportation, changes in social groupings, and various forms of immunosuppression, as we will see shortly. Macaques are not alone, or old world monkeys are not alone, in possessing an alpha herpes virus that causes ulcers of the oral genital region. New World monkeys have a similar virus, although not identical, which used to go by the name herpes virus tamarinus or herpes T, but now is called herpes virus simia type 1. If you're a lumper, most of the alpha herpes viruses that cause significant necrotizing lesions are often number one in their particular species, including Maxine herpes virus type 1, herpes virus simia type 1, uh, bovine herpes type virus type 1, which causes necrotizing lesions in the uh, uh, trachea of cattle, and avian herpes virus type 1, which causes infectious laryngotracheitis, among others. So I usually, type 1s I usually remember as alpha herpes viruses, which cause these necroulcerative lesions. There's a couple of differences here in herpes virus simia type 1 that are of note. The virus itself is called, is carried by squirrel monkeys. Squirrel monkeys, as a natural host, generally don't show any clinical signs, and if they do, they're very minor lesions of the orogenital lesions. However, the problem is that this one will jump species and cause tremendous damage in other New World monkeys, including owl monkeys, tamarins, and marmosets. And usually, instead of being restricted to the orogenital lesions, will cause widespread systemic necrosis and multiple organs resulting in the death of these animals. So remember this one is carried by squirrel monkeys, causing death in other New World primates. You'll see lesions in the liver, the spleen, the intestine, throughout the animal's body. So this is herpes simia type 1. The third large group of non-human primates which have an alpha herpes virus that causes lesions of the orogenital reasons is the baboon. Now, unfortunately, the baboon folks decided they were going to be different. Instead of making this type 1, this is herpes virus papio type 2. We'll see some other type 2s. They just had to be different. A couple of other differences is here we have the, the traditional necrotizing lesions of the mouth and the tongue. But this is not a zoonotic disease, nor is herpes virus simia. You don't have to worry about catching this one. And systemic dissemination is much less common in this than the other two herpes viruses. So, in review, your alpha herpes viruses of note are Maxine herpes virus type 1. That's the bad one. That's B virus. That's the one we need to be very concerned about. Herpes virus simia type 1, carried by squirrel monkeys, doesn't do anything. 
kills all other new world primates. One of the reasons I don't like squirrel monkeys. Nothing kills them, but they have diseases they spread to other new world primates. And then finally, herpes virus papio 2. And this is a picture of uh, Maxine herpes virus type 1 in a young macaque. You can see the ulcers on the uh, glands penis, on the shaft of the penis. Uh, these tend to be start out as vesicles, then they become ulcerated. Eventually they'll heal in a matter of two to four weeks. But you can imagine that if you have a breeding program, that this would cause problems with the breeding program, not only in the short term when the lesions are active, but also in the long term because you can have scarring and fibrosis. Well, oral genital lesions aren't so bad, but as we said before, in animals that have this condition that are very young, or especially those who are used in research projects where they're going to be immunosuppressed, you may result in a recrudescent lesion, which not only causes lesions on the face and the genitals, but also will result in lesions throughout the animal's body. Here's a young pigtail macaque, and you can see that these lesions have spread from the lips or all over the face. Much worse infection in the very young. Here is an owl monkey with significant ulceration of the face, which is much more characteristic of herpes virus simiae. Remember, this is that uh, disease that absolutely lays waste to the other New World primates. And if you hold on till the end of this lecture, I'm going to show you something that looks very similar because New World primates are very susceptible to a number of herpes viruses. Great picture from uh, Dr. Lois Colgan as part of our Wednesday slide conference showing an immunosuppressed macaque with the disseminated version of herpes B. And you can see these large plaques and areas of coalescing necrosis and hemorrhage throughout the liver, the spleen. And you'll see it in multiple organs. You can see it in the lung. You can see it in just about any organ. But liver and spleen tend to be uh, the first and the worst affected. This is the liver from an Aotis monkey. And these areas of hemorrhage don't represent simply hemorrhage, but they represent areas of hepatic necrosis as a result of this disseminated form of herpes simiae 1. And the histologic lesion is very similar when you look at the parenchymal organs in these affected animals. You have these multifocal areas of degeneration and necrosis. And if you look closely, all of these hepatocytes at the periphery of the lesion, the ones in the center of the lesion are dead, so it's very difficult to pick up. But at the periphery of the lesion, you can see these very nice characteristic eosinophilic intranuclear inclusions which are very diagnostic for herpes viral lesions. So those are the alpha herpes viruses. Necrotizing lesions can be localized or can be disseminated. There are three basic groups of herpes viruses, so we talked about one. The second type of herpes virus are the, the uh, type B herpes viruses, also known as cytomegaloviruses. We all have cytomegaloviruses. Most species have cytomegaloviruses. They rarely cause any problem unless the animal is severely immunosuppressed. In primates, cytomegalovirus establishes a low-grade persistent infection in CD34 positive myeloid progenitor cells, among other cell types. It's always there, but you almost never see it except in the areas of or times of severe immunosuppression, usually viral immunosuppression. It is a significant cause of pathology in HIV-infected people as well as SIV or simian lentivirus infected non-human primates. And it causes a number of lesions, the characteristics of which are generally that they are very angry and the inflammation is generally neutrophilic. And we don't think 
generally about neutrophils as being effector cells in uh, uh, inflammatory diseases of viral nature. Usually we think about lymphocytes, but remember that these animals that have cytomegaloviral active infections have no lymphocytes. The lymphocytes have dropped to a precipitously low level impairing cell mediated immunity in these animals, and so they have to fight infections with neutrophils and mast cells. A very characteristic lesion in uh, immunosuppressed macaques with active uh, B herpes viral or cytomegaloviral infections are known as pseudotumors. They're raised, they're angry, they're red, they look like tumors, but they're not tumors. They're areas of necrosis and neutrophil infection. And the diagnosis of cytomegalovirus when it's active is not that difficult because you see these very large cells with extremely large nuclei and prominent uh, viral inclusions. That's why it gets its name, cytomegalovirus. Cytomegalovirus seroprevalence in macaque colonies approaches 100% by one year of age, so everybody's got it. And it's probably shed between infected and uninfected animals very early in life um, because affected animals will normally shed it in very low amounts in the urine, saliva, and genital secretions. Vertical transmission of cytomegalovirus has not yet been infected. Uh, most uh, newborn animals have high maternal antibodies and fetal protection, but over time that's going to wane and they're going to pick up this virus, which is shed by all primates uh, uh, on a regular basis. As we said before, you will see uh, somewhat hemorrhagic necrotizing lesions with a prominent infiltrate of neutrophils in a number of organs. Uh, you can see them in the intestine as we saw before. The lung is very common. And in non-human primates uh, with lentiviral immunosuppression, you will often see it in the nervous system. It's often seen in the area of the leptomeninges. You will see uh, perivascular cuffing with neutrophilic infiltrates and a fair amount of necrosis and fibrin exudation, as we see in this uh, longitudinal section of the brain in an infected animal. Here it is in the spinal cord, these areas of necrosis and hemorrhage. The morphologic diagnosis would be a segmental necrohemorrhagic meningomyelitis. And another place that's commonly seen is in the testis areas of hemorrhage heralding the areas of necrosis which underlie them. So that's type B herpes viruses or cytomegaloviruses. You can very rarely see those uh, inclusions uh, in non-immunosuppressed animals. Occasionally they may pop up in uh, ductal epithelium of salivary gland. If you really want to see them, um, they're most commonly seen in guinea pigs. Uh, which have not been manipulated. And if you look at a lot of guinea pig salivary glands, you will occasionally run across one or two of those big cells, not causing any problem to the animal. And then finally, we have the, uh, the gamma herpes viruses. Uh, gamma herpes viruses have been split within the last 10 years into the lymphocryptoviruses and the radenoviruses, both of which are associated with some significant issues in non-human primates. Uh, gamma herpes viruses are traditionally the ones that cause lymphoproliferation or lymphoid neoplasms. They're transforming viruses. Uh, a very characteristic uh, uh, gamma herpes virus uh, in other species will be the gamma herpes virus that causes Marek's disease in chickens or the gamma herpes viruses that causes malignant catarrhal fever and uh, lymphoproliferative disease in a number of ruminant species. Let's take a quick look at them and the diseases that they cause in uh, non-human primates. This is a baboon and you can see that uh, the inguinal lymph nodes are markedly enlarged. This will be a, a lymphoid neoplasm or malignant lymphoma of the inguinal nodes and this is a baboon. And most of your most of the uh, the gamma herpes viruses 
have the appellation of type 2, remember that the baboon people are different. I didn't make this stuff up, folks. I just want you to keep it straight. So this is Herpes Virus Papio 1. Herpes Virus Papio 1 is not there. Gamma Herpes Virus. Okay? And it causes lymphoid neoplasms throughout the body. There in the lingual, inguinal lymph nodes. Here in the intestine. It is a complete virus and is able to cause lymphoid neoplasms on its own without any help from immunosuppression. Here's an owl monkey with an ugly looking retroorbital lymph node. They have their own. And guess what? It's carried by squirrel monkeys and it's given to the other New World primates. And it causes lymphoid proliferation. I don't split the ones in baboons and the uh, uh, New World primates into lymphocryptoviruses or adenoviruses. I just call them gamma herpes viruses. Here it is in the uh, eye socket. Here is a uh, mesenteric lymph nodes markedly increased in size as a result of uh, herpes virus uh, a cimeri type 2 in common marmosets. If I have previously uh, uh, referred to herpes virus cimeri, that's S-A-I-M-I-R-I, -I, uh, type 1 or type 2 is herpes virus simii, I apologize. Uh, I got off a plane last night at 9 o'clock from Australia and it's 6 o'clock the next morning, uh, and I'm here at work. So suffering from a little bit of lack of sleep and uh, jet lag. So uh, this is herpes virus cimeri type 2, and herpes virus cimeri type 1 is the, uh, uh, is the equivalent uh, alpha herpes virus in New World primates. I want to make sure I get that straight. And histologically, this gives you a very good picture of what you would see with these lymphoproliferative uh, agents. You can see here in the liver, all the sinusoids are markedly expanded, resulting in atrophy of the intervening hepatocytes. And just absolutely massive numbers of these neoplastic lymphocytes. The, uh, the lymphoid organs will be effaced by these neoplastic lymphocytes, and here it's already starts to spill over into the visceral organs as well. Okay, we said that uh, the gamma herpes viruses of baboons and New World primates are complete viruses and by themselves are able to cause lymphoma. It's not the same in the old world monkeys or the macaques. Okay, they do have a gamma herpes virus. It is Maccasine herpes virus type 2. It's a lymphocryptovirus. Okay, but by itself, it's not going to cause tumors. These animals have to be concurrently immunosuppressed, usually with simian lentivirus, to see this tumor take effect. So just remember, it needs a little bit of help. A little bit of immunosuppression is enough for it to gain traction and cause a, a lymphoma. You can see it in all the lymphoid organs. This is a really nice picture from uh, Ann Lewis showing the uh, large lymphoid neoplasm effacing the wall of the intestine. And as we would expect in any animal species, intestinal lymphoma is a, a very short survival time because these neoplasms, they go right through the wall and then any toxins, bacterial products or whatever, are absorbed basically right into the bloodstream. Okay, so we have covered the basic Alpha herpes viruses, beta herpes viruses, and gamma herpes viruses, and I'll, and I'll come back to another one later on, um, the radenovirus that affects macaques. And it's associated with another condition in another lecture. So those are the basic ones. I want to show a couple of other ones that I think that we need to know about um, that are very important, and then we'll close out this lecture on the herpes viruses. Here's a marmoset with a uh, significant facial lesions and this would be characterized or very characteristic of herpes simplex virus which can jump from man to uh, new world primates. They're very susceptible to uh, herpes simplex 1 and so a very common denominator in cases of infection 
is that uh, handlers have an open sore on their on their face they have a cold sore maybe they're sharing food uh, they take a little bit of bite off of their sandwich and they share it with these animals thinking they're doing a good thing and it just absolutely lays waste when herpes viruses get into new world primates it generally is always a systemic infection usually resulting in death and it can result in death fast enough that there are no external clinical signs like this but this group of monkeys had significant uh, oral facial lesions before they died in fairly high percentage of cases and then an older lesion but this is also herpes simplex 1 from a human handler in a common marmoset and you can see multiple areas of necrosis within the liver spleen and you would see it in multiple organs often also including the brain this is a disease that um, can also affect rabbits uh, pet rabbits can be infected by owners who have active cold sores kissing and cuddling the animals and they can transmit that virus which causes an encephali encephalitis in uh, rabbits just like herpes B would cause one in humans so be very careful with new world primates and any handlers that might have herpes B herpes simplex carriers uh, one other uh, disseminated herpes viral infection that you can see in macaques which also manifest as I'll show you in a minute as a cutaneous lesion is simian varicella virus also known as seabed herpes virus 6, 7, or 9 which causes necrosis and hemorrhage in many organs and it's related to uh, the varicella virus that causes chicken pox in humans it's a very pathogenic for macaques African green monkeys, pigtail macaques, and paddis monkeys. And you may see no cutaneous lesions and simply this necrosis in multiple organs. If you look closely, you can see these small areas of pallor in the liver. The spleen is very enlarged um, in, and has multiple areas of necrosis. And this great picture by Renee Hockenin. I am not good with rashes in uh, macaques. To me, a rash is sort of a rash is sort of a rash. <clears throat> Excuse me. And a number of viral infections will result in rashes, including herpes virus, measles virus, and this particular virus, simian varicella virus, um, causes a particularly angry rash and maybe the only rash I think that I can identify. The reason that I think I can identify it is the virus is very close to the, to the virus that causes chicken pox. And as we know, chicken pox can manifest later in life in middle-aged or older humans as shingles, a particularly pruritic, painful, and erythematous rash. And, and the same thing happens in these animals with simian varicella virus. They get this really angry rash, and they've torn it up as well because it's pruritic. It is the angriest of all the rashes and uh, sometimes I kid myself that I think I can tell this but it is a herpes virus it starts out as uh, vesicles often over the face we see some vesicles here and crusts and this is what the way you usually see it because it's intensely pruritic the animals are scratching at it if you catch it very early like many herpes viral lesions like chicken pox or whatever you can actually catch the vesicular stage in this absolutely marvelous picture by Dr. Nancy Cock down at the Wake Forest. So this is the first lesion and then it gets to be a little worse and then you eventually get this really angry lesion. So that's simian varicella virus. I think it looks like shingles. And with that we're going to bring this lecture on herpes viruses to a close. As I said before, there are quite a lot of herpes viruses. All species have herpes viruses um, and primates have quite a number, each individual species. So with that, uh, this is lecture one. Look forward to more lectures and in the next lecture we will talk about the immunosuppressive viruses, lentivirus and the retroviruses and a lot of very characteristic diseases associated with infection of non-human primates. With that, thank you so much for your attention, and I hope everyone has a great day.